The truth is funny. Shift happens with monthly guest host Karen Button. Get ready to toss your limitations and shift into a space of authentic, limitless living. Karen is a holistic nurse practitioner, plant essence alchemist, and movement medicine educator, bringing you passionate conversations that will ignite your potential to create expansive change in any and every facet of your life. Are you ready? Here's Karen. Good morning and welcome to the show. I'm very excited, so we're gonna dive right in. Uh, I have the honor of speaking with Katie Hess, who is the owner and founder of Lotus Way, one of the world's leading flower apothecaries. Oh, she has an amazing book with these unbelievable explanations and photos of the power of healing available to us through plants and flowers. She's a TEDx speaker. She's the founder, as I mentioned, of Lotus Way and continues to contribute and offer to this world often very unrecognized healing potential. Um, she found what worked for her and is here to share that with the world. And I am so thrilled to have her here. So Katie, welcome. Thanks, Karen. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> It was funny, I was speaking to someone the other day and they're like, you know, she really needs to get hooked up with Oprah. Oprah would be the woman. And I was like, oh, she already is. She's already been listed as one of the top, you know, gifts at, at a Christmas time years ago. It was a funny moment of like everybody, this was when they were trying your new product, the sacred body. And they were like, this is amazing. Like this needs to like, and I was like, I, I think it is, you know? And so this is what we're here to talk about today is this, I just, the word sacred body is, ah, just take a moment to sort of let that permeate out there because we often are directed away from the mystery and magic that is offered within our own body. And yet you are offering this redirection. Um, so tell us a little bit about whatever about it. Like, yeah, I mean, it's interesting. To you. How did we get there? How, how, I mean, I, I can attest to my clients, the minute they try it, they're like, whoa, and they just stop. And most of these clients are people that have already been using your flower essences. And usually their favorites are like inner peace, joy juice. Those are the two that New Yorkers tend to be drawn to uh, radiant energy. But although interestingly, in the last six months or so less frequently, it's usually joy juice and, and inner peace, and then joy juice again. <laughs> Although I'll say I'm um, also inner knowing is starting to show its face. But then when they try sacred body, there is this pause and then this look of bewilderment of like, what is in here? What, what is this? Why is this? And then, you know, then you want to identify what it is. So your best, tell us. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's interesting that sacred body is coming up now so much because, um, you know, I, there's so much tied up in our bodies. So there, it can be like, I have an ache or a pain that I've got to unravel or why do I have this? Or why is this happening to my body? Or I have this physical symptom that's bugging me for months and I can't figure it out. And it's so frustrating, right? There's, you know, and then we get into like, God, I have this cellulite on my butt or my body is like chubby or is, some, is doing something that I don't understand and why, you know? So we, I think, oftentimes we get down on ourselves um, about our physical body. So this idea of oh, not only using flower remedies, but also being able to open up more wisdom within ourselves and more intentionality around how we see our bodies, mm -hmm. uh, that they are this incredible vessel of potential and that we have a whole lot more understanding than we realize and a whole lot more capacity to change our bodies in ways that we may think are impossible at times. Um, and I love to see the body as like, you know, not just the physical flesh body. That's what the whole thing about sacred body is, is, you know, years ago, my flower essence teacher would say in the world of energy medicine, it's like having a projector and a screen 
if there's some abstraction on the projection on the wall, you're not gonna go to the screen and wash it off. You'll go all the way back to the projector to remove the piece of dust or whatever it is. And so the physical body is the screen. The subtle bodies, which are around and interwoven in our organs and our skin, but also outside of our body up to sometimes three meters of space around us, that is part of our body as well. And the subtle bodies are really a gateway to a whole world of understanding of ourselves, whether it's not just physical, but also emotional patterns, why we are the way we are. And all of this kind of vast untapped potential that we know is there, it's just like, how do we tap into it? So in short, this whole body of work is how to use the healing power of flowers and flower remedies to, to open up that box a little bit more. The subtle body, I think it's a, it's a term that um, I wanna say confuses some people. Do you have, um, how do, can people, like, what do you think are examples of people tapping into their own subtle body? I mean, I, I would say when they spray, you know, a spray and they have that moment of like, whoa, what is this? Mm -hmm. Would you agree that, that that is a moment of connecting to the subtle body? Because we tend to be um, overly directed to pay attention to the physical parts, right? Like there's something wrong with my finger. Oh, is that my heart? Is that my, so the subtle body is this realm that feels, um, well, subtle. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's, it's wisdom right there. Uh, would you say yeah. that, 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 that no. pause that happens is a moment of connecting to the subtle body? How, how could you cue people to, to recognize mm -hmm. how it uh, is, is maybe even the driving force behind what we experience. <laughs> Absolutely the driving force behind everything. If you've witnessed a pet die or a loved one, a family member die, it's very, very clear once the consciousness leaves the body. It becomes mm -hmm. very clear that this, this body that we cherish is really just a costume. It's a house, it's a temporary house. We come in, we go out, right? So this, this, this beautiful physical body of ours is this kind of dense flesh, you know, gorgeous, but also it's a dense flesh body and there's something else that animates the body. And, you know, scientists have actually measured in weight how much the, the human consciousness weighs. And when someone passes, you know, the body becomes lighter because the consciousness leaves the temporary house. And I think of it in terms of like ways that we can feel it on an everyday basis. I think like, who was it who said some of the best things in life can't be seen? Mm. You know, like love. You can't actually right. visually see love like shooting out from somebody's heart. But you know that that's happening. You know that you feel it. You see a loved one enter the room and there's something, there are sparks that fly, right? Yeah. Um, or another or even like example, at a wedding, be, right? Like when everyone mm -hmm. like tears up because they, it's like it becomes palpable. Maybe because yeah. it's a ritual and a tradition, and we all tap in and notice it. Oh, I love that. And then maybe in everyday life, we're less conditioned to witness it. Ooh. And there, are, there are other places you can sense energies. Like, for example, let's say you take a trip to the ocean, and you step outside, and you're like. Ooh, oh, this is what the ocean feels like. That's another form of sensing energy. Or let's say you fly somewhere and you land. Instantly when you get out of the airplane, you get this sense of the place, like the collective energy of the place. So like when you land in Taiwan, it feels totally different from Singapore, it feels different from Denver, it feels different from Vancouver. And everybody has had that sense of, oh, this place feels so different. Mm. just to say there are so many ways that we feel and perceive energy whether we realize it or not uh, and there's so much more happening than just this kind of physical reality that we see and so this subtle body is the body that flower essences impact charge up support charge up <laughs> ignite harmonize. I mean, you see it in, in acupuncture, you know, which is a modality that's arguably three to 5,000 years old, right. you know, that um, 
know, beautiful TCM doctors have been tapping into with needles on multiple points and meridian systems for a long time. And, and that's, you know, similar. They're tweaking the ley lines of our bodies, which are, uh, you know, it's the subtle body that they're working with. It's the energy body. It's not like they're put it, poking a needle into your liver and manipulating it, you know? <laughs> it's like, and if anyone's had an acupuncture treatment, you know, it's really effective. So the world of flower remedies is kind of like acupuncture without the needles. It's just using the pure essence and every flower on the planet has a really specific benefit when you introduce that into your subtle body, whether you put it in your mouth, you put it on your skin, it will harmonize and remove stagnancies and um, help return us to our natural balance. I just want to sit with that for a moment, right? The return us to our natural balance, which I think um, most people are trying to try to figure out balance as, a, as an intellectual thing. Like, mm -hmm. well, I feel off balance, but sometimes that off balance thing is exactly what's needed to activate and optimize your body, right? Um, and, and, and there's this element, you know, even in my clients and stuff that we're always, we're searching for this balance piece. We're searching to feel better, feel good. And I would almost say with, for me, for flower essences, it, it's, it helps me be okay with when I'm not feeling good, you know, that this, which is not always included in our perception of, of what balance is because our bodies yeah. do need to experience, right? Grief and anger and worry. And, and, and I think the plant world understands that, right? And that's the gift of it when we go out there into the woods and only we can make space for the chaos that might be arising uh, in our own bodies. And I think um, often that's what I see when people spray. I also love that this one um, is designed to go in the face because I will be the first to say, I was like, what? Because I have one client in particular who absolutely loves flower essences and she sprays it in my face. And it's just funny, like, oh, that, that looks. And then I was like, get out of here. This one is designed to go in the face. <laughs> But now I, I absolutely love it. And, and my client, um, she's probably even listening, was, was like, see, I told you that's the best way to do it. And, and what is it about the face that, that this one offers? Uh, yeah, you're talking about the sacred body mist. Um, yeah. It's in a base of uh, bioactive silver. So it's um, very protective, it stimulates the immune system and the blood and um, you know, helps protect you from pathogens. So you can literally like spray it in your nose and your mouth and it's really good for your skin. And in this base of silver it are the nine flower remedies that help your body super rapidly uh, cleanse itself. And then it has night blooming jasmine oil, which is the best in the world. It's like, you know, oh, it's just so divine. But I mean, back to your point, I was thinking like this whole idea in the Western world of balance, um, I think sometimes what happens is we stuff and repress a lot of what we're feeling because mm. the idea of balance is somehow equated to like, I should keep my shit together. I should yes. have it all <laughs> together. You know, I should be a certain way and I shouldn't feel these things or I shouldn't, you know, lose it. And I think of it in terms of more like stabilization and like you said becoming more comfortable with the discomfort because we can't we can't dig through our closet and figure out what actually works for us and what doesn't work for us if we're not stable first we have to become stable that's i mean rather than balance because balance has this like weird connotation of like perfect am i doing it perfectly am i doing it right rainbows and unicorns <laughs> right <laughs> whereas like if I'm stable, then I can start digging through my closet and figuring out like, oh, what is this piece of me that's afraid of rejection? Or, oh, what is this piece of me that feels a little bit insecure around people over here? Mm -hmm. um, and then you can actually look at it and kind of air out your laundry and go, oh, what is this? Oh, oh, that's about that. Oh, okay, no big deal. And, you know, toss it out or yeah. assimilate it in some way. Um, so I think that's one of the, the strengths of flower remedies is to really help stabilize us so we can become more comfortable with the discomfort. You know, some people um, are really uncomfortable with silence. 
yes. <laughs> and then other people okay. are really comfortable with it. And you have like, or maybe you have certain relationships in your life where with certain people, you could just like, wow, I just like rest in the silence and you just feel so good. And then other people, it's like, uh, gotta fill the silence. So it's that kind of dynamic, but inside of ourselves, it's like, can we allow ourselves to be more comfortable with what's there? And then it can actually move because when we stuff it or repress it or tighten it or hate ourselves for feeling something, it keeps it in the body longer and sometimes can even manifest into physical disease. Oh. So the trick is how do we allow this stuff to move? You know, anger is not a bad thing. Anger also gives us clarity. Grief is not a bad thing. Grief brings us incredible gifts too. Um, so to your point, any tool that can help us move and process emotion is invaluable for our lives yeah. because we have so many of those experiences. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, I mean, and it, it almost, I would say, defines protection in a level, you know, being with what is, is, is even more protective than hiding from it. That's not to say running away or hiding from it may not be the perfect action in any given moment, but that, if that's what all, the only one that we have available to us. Mm -hmm. And so when we're using over and over and over again, you know, I, I the, the opportunity to utilize a different strategy um, is, is so beneficial to all of us, right? Humanity as, mm -hmm. as, a, as a larger uh, community to have multiple available reactions, expressions, mm -hmm perceptions, opportunities, understandings, gives us that gift of right adaptability. Yeah, I mean, sometimes we're just so afraid to feel. Like sometimes yeah. we're afraid that our feelings are gonna overwhelm us or that we're gonna go nutso, you know? And yeah. we, we just kind of resist because we're, we're afraid that this tsunami is gonna come and just take us out. Like, yeah. like, we don't know what's gonna happen if we allow ourselves to feel it. Oof. But then when we do, and, you know, with the help of things like flower remedies that make it a little easier and more graceful, we can actually get the gifts of it. And we are not our thoughts and our emotions, but we identify so strongly with them. And then sometimes not only do we have an emotion, but then we like get down on ourselves for having it and think we yeah. shouldn't. Have, and then we just like get all tied up in knots. Um, so I think the more we can you know, and I include myself in this yeah. self-judgment. I, I was just thinking, I mean, I was up at 2.30 <laughs> last night with this like well of like, I've actually been feeling more grounded in this well of acute anxiety at 2.30 in the morning. And it was like, there are two parts of me going, like the part of like, isn't this funny that you're so worried about that little thing on your finger? And then this other part of me, you're like, but, you know, cause I'm a nurse <laughs> practitioner, trauma nurse, like, you know, what could happen? You might need systemic antibiotics. And, you know, so I have this wealth of, of experiences that say, you know, basically you can die from anything. And then this ever growing wisdom that says, okay, it's okay, you know, and, and you can't spend your life or you don't want to, not that you can't, cause you certainly can want to spend your life in fear or, or reacting from fear or engaging in action that is about preventing something that may or may not happen. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, a, a trick I've been using lately is to literally just point out to myself every time I'm in the past or the future. Yeah. Like, you know, when you're like, I'm gonna die, it's like future. But yeah. I learned that and I saw that past. Yeah. Like just to really, remind myself of how little I'm in the present or how, how, you know, how easy it is to get myself back to the present. If I notice that I'm in the past or the future <laughs> yeah. happening yeah. so often. And, and we are like, we're, we're led that way in you know, the media and whatever, you know, it's always, what about this? What about that? And some days you're like, Oh, they're crazy. And other days you're like, Oh my God, you're right. What about that? You know, and then you go into this, this sort of tailspin, even though, you know, I've sort of dedicated my life to this leaving, you know, the, the formal institution of medicine to explore mm -hmm. what I felt was, you know, so very powerful that it would really affect the physical body. So I continually am amazed that, you know, how a flower remedy, you know, that has the energetic imprint of a flower 
can literally lead someone to experience profound lifting of the burden that they've been carrying on their shoulders. And then over time, kind of rewire the system to remember that it's possible to live like that all the time um, with these little, you know, 2.30 a.m. blips that might pop in and be like, okay, well, so that's all right. You know, you, you felt a little crazy last night or, or you know, could, could you enjoy that? Could you imagine that there's a rewiring going on at that time that that chaos is, is in some way supporting you? And I, I always think, you always said that to me. I remember I'd, I'd, I forget what I said to you one time, some worry about something that was going off my eye and you're like, but what if, what if that's actually supporting you? And you know, the right words at the right time. And you're like, <laughs> I, I, I hadn't even thought of that in the dialogue in my head of, of why, you know, this was happening. And it was this thing that I was doing that was creating it and I needed to stop it and I needed to prevent it. And mm. so what was the impetus for Sacred Body? I know the video talks about how you, you had, you know, and you spent a week mm. up every night um, sort of exploring what, and I love this question, what does humanity need? Is, is that the question? Is that really? Yeah, yeah. How yeah, I mean, I that's them? anytime I go flower essence collecting, that's always the question is like, what, you know, over the next 10, 20, 30 years of people that I can reach, what do they need? What will they need most of? What can I find? And I just let Mother Nature lead me. Um, this case was, I guess I had a moment of like desperation um, earlier this year of just feeling like, God, I've got to do more. Like, you know there are things happening with the human race that are so um, urgent that I do more what more can I do um, so I just you know studied all different kinds of plants and which plants have been used for healing the body and oddly it was during the one or two weeks here in, in the Arizona desert when the agave start to bloom and the agaves are a funny plant because they they don't bloom until they're ready to die. So they grow and they grow and they grow and year after year they grow and they grow and they might be 25 years old and then they shoot out this huge, incredible stock full of flowers and then they die and that's it. It's like one chance, you know, one final hurrah and that's it. Um, so I ended up collecting one on the property of our office and then another one on this path where I go running every morning, two different species. And, you know, that was part of the key I felt to botanicals that could very rapidly purify the body mm. along with some other really important plants that bloomed last year. Um, and because what I see is that we're living in a world where they're, we're just full of toxins, you know, and you get kind of overwhelmed if you really think about it. It's like, oh my God, they're in the shower curtain liner and they're in the air and they're in the food and they're in the, you know, textiles. And they're, it's like, ah, like we're literally barraged everywhere. And then if you're like taking pharmaceuticals or, you know, it's, or birth control pill, like it really, really quickly adds up. And I would say even somebody like, like I take no substances. I don't drink alcohol. I don't smoke no pharmaceuticals. I'm very healthy. I exercise and sweat a lot. Even so I do my labs and I have way too much estrogen in my body from the environment. It's like, mm -hmm. and I don't even eat soy, you know, <laughs> it's like, not even. how does yeah. this, so we need uh, methods, practices, tools, and remedies that can very swiftly help our bodies detox. And not only from chemicals and heavy metals, but also forms of energy so you know the three four or five g's all the g's and the bluetooth and the wi-fi's and the all the g's, all the g's <laughs> you know the invisible barrage of radiation that we tend to ignore because it's so dripped out mm -hmm. um so really looking at subtle body health because that's where it all starts again the body is the screen the subtle body is the projector. If we don't address things at the energy, essence, vitality, emotional, mental, it goes through all those bodies, then it shows up as a physical issue. And nobody wants physical issues. So 
it's like, how do we dial it back and address it from here before it gets to the physical body? And that was really, you know, the driving force behind, because this one has more flowers than you traditionally put, right, in a, in a remedy, you know, <laughs> which is uh, I, always an interesting, you know, what drives the, 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 we'll call you the healer, you know, or the, the, the vehicle for, through which we get offered this gift. Um, and I, I think what you're saying is it, it, it showed itself to you, you know, it wasn't like I'm going to set out and I'm going to make a product that has this many flowers in it, you know, the nine. And it, it was sort of like, no, this is what I need. And then this is what will support humanity. And then this, will, you know, and, and the, you kind of, you sit with it, you look at it and you're like, yeah, I mean, it's not up to me. I just look at our library of what we have and like intuitively surrender and tell me what, you know, there's flowers in there. I'm like, oh, I don't like how that one looks, <laughs> you know, but it's not about how it looks. It's not about me. It's, um, you know, what can serve us the best. Um, oh, it's so good. Well, we're, we're, time goes so fast. So we're going to take a little break, but maybe we'll dive in a little bit to that. Oh, I hate that flower, that flower <laughs> you know, like where, where, where that also can be something that supports mm -hmm. us, you know, like, wait, there's that in it. I don't like that. That one never, <laughs> you know, like what, how we can sort of open to what, what's available in there as we continue on. And then we'll get into some of the, um, what you've been hearing, you know, uh, that what people are experiencing in, in using this. Cause I feel like that's really where all of us can be, feel that resonance and be drawn in. So we will be right back. Feel free to call in if there's any questions, 1-800. Yes, oh, call geez. in, call in. Yes, call in. Tell me, uh, what, what's, what's the phone number again? Look, I'm blanking on it. 920-2819-920. Come on. Ah, you say it so well. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. I'm here uh, on The Truth is Funny speaking with Katie Hess of uh, Lotus Way. And we're talking about um, opportunities for transformation, change, healing, and the development of her new gift to the world called Sacred Body, which is a combination of nine botanical flower remedies that um, are, are really here to support us with so many different aspects. We were discussing so much about the auric field, the auric body and ways to tap into that, um, notice it, feel it. I was discussing my own experiences with clients of them spraying this sacred body on them and having that moment of pause and wide eyes of like, whoa, what was that? And, and that amplification that we sometimes make out when we're in the go, 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 do, do, do part of the world. But what we were tapping into right before the break was this, oh, I don't like that flower. Oh, I never, I've, that, that flower is awful. You know, they, they, what sometimes to me, it's like one out of 20 people comes in and they're like, oh my gosh, that flower's in that, that one is awful. Tell us a little bit about <laughs> what, what that is, people. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, it's both what you're drawn to and what you're averse to that will, you know, give you um, the, the clues about what you need the most. Typically, the flowers that you're most drawn to will, you know, when reflected back to you, you'll be like, oh my God, yeah, that's totally what I'm going through. And then occasionally you'll have one flower that's like, this is repulsive, like, oh, disgusting. Oh, I don't like that. Ooh, something about it or, or it makes you feel uneasy or irritable. And that's also uh, a good indication of something that would like to come to the surface, yeah. but it's also something that you don't really want to look at. It's not what me not want to look at something what are you talking about. I'm, I just have to go right now. I'll be back. <laughs> you know, and it's funny. I mean, for everyone, it's different. I remember one woman, there's this, I mean, just like stunningly gorgeous, you know, the Hong Kong orchid, the red, pink tree, mm -hmm. it's a tree flower and it's just, beautiful and I remember this woman saying I hate that flower I hate it and I was just like chuckling to myself like how on earth would you just hate that flower and so I said I think maybe you should work with it 
and she was grumbling and reluctant about it but she called me three weeks later and was like oh my god this totally turned my life upside down like you know there were things in her love life that she hadn't wanted to look at and it just opened and softened and tenderized everything um so yeah that can be a really helpful clue as well <laughs> i remember there was, we i was doing a at the town that i live in larchmont there um it was a, like a sidewalk sale so i had a table and, and actually my daughter and i were doing you know we had lotus way and it was really fun you know it's a spray and it was it was back when you just had the six originals i think so it was a really funny moment. This one woman was absolutely in love with the infinite love and she just kept, you know, going for it. And she was like, I just love this. Then there was a much older woman that walked by, stopped in her tracks, turned around and she was like, what is that? That is awful. <laughs> and we all <laughs> kind of started giggling. It was like, well, this is, this is a, you know, a flower essence remedy that's about loving self and compassion towards self and <laughs> all these funny, you know, moments. And she was absolutely, and she just kept walking. She wanted absolutely nothing, you know, in those moments where you're like, Ooh, you see yourself in that, right? I had that moment of like, I can, you know, there's many times in my life where that I have shut things down and and not wanted to do it and and you think it's that flower and it needs to be avoided forever or whatever that might be that person that that you know aggravated you that it's them and <laughs> we start to loosen that a little bit and, and look into our own operating system but like you said right without the stability the foundation the groundingness we're not going to be able to look at that because we're going to, we're going to feel that it's too dangerous. Uh, and, and so many of these essences offer us that opportunity to kind of rewire back to this idea that there is a sacredness held within. There is a foundational support that's not necessarily rooted in the structure of your house or the town that you live in or the school that you went to or the degrees that you have or whatever it might be. And you can experience that safety within so i guess it's just how you offer it to people right is 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 yeah i mean sometimes it's too big of a sometimes it's too big of a jump you know in terms of energy it's too big of a jump for people and they need to be like stepped up a little slower yeah. um we have the same experience like if we're like really crabby and someone comes in and they're like hi we're like hi you know it doesn't <laughs> It's like, you're too happy for me. I wasn't ready to go there yet. <laughs> and we just kind of need to like ease our way not out. Not today. And I don't know what's <laughs> making you happy, but it's definitely not working for me. So you take that littleness out of there. <laughs> it's so good. She's always so happy. What's the matter with her? <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's, 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 a good, it's a good reminder because oftentimes we find ourselves trying to convince our family and friends of things that we know are good for them or better for them. And um, you know, sometimes it just is a slower path. Yeah. To realize that. <laughs> oh, right. I mean, boy, family, we're always, well, how about this or do that? Or, yeah. And there is a, that's been as a nurse, that's such a, you know, so I'm so wired in me to want to help other people and starting to learn that maybe the best way I can help them is by, you know, looking at my own personal transformation and, and, if I think they need help, you know, mirror it around and give myself perhaps what they're mirroring that I yeah. think I don't have or think that they need. And, um, but it's a constant process. You know, I literally just, <laughs> if I'm not paying attention, I go right back into that mode of, you know, trying to save them. Uh, yeah. I actually wanted to share with you that we're going to do, um, I can't remember if I told you this before, but we're going to do a, actually a six month sacred body program too. So for, for people who want to, I mean, you can work with the remedies anytime you want to, but for people who want to really dive deeper into what kind of movement do I actually need? What kind of food or nourishment or creativity is actually what I need? What kind of, like, how do I amplify my electricity? How do I expand my chi? What minerals do I need? What kind of awareness practices can I put into place? Um, it's an opportunity to really kind of get down to business, but in a really fun way. It's not going to be like 
and this is the diet you should follow you know gosh like all that stuff is so tiring or like grueling workouts it's really letting your body be the teacher Mm -hmm. and your body tell you what it needs Mm -hmm. next um so and then we'll be you know bringing in experts and doing group coaching and um in it together is that like an online program or is that yeah, it'll be online. Um, we'll probably release some information about it in September, in mid-September, and it'll start in October. And it should be like easy breezy, you know, like mm-hmm. some live Zooms and you can listen to the recording if you can't make it and a group coaching session and lots of little practices and methods that maybe aren't so conventional but are easy to weave into your everyday life. Mm-hmm to really move the dial in terms of how you feel and how your physical body operates and how your subtle body manifests. In your mm. <laughs> well, and the idea would be you'd be taking the sacred body yeah. while you're in the six month program and sort of exploring yeah. what speaks to you, what you know, movements or coaching or mm. digging behind the veil of I'm fine. Everything is fine. <laughs> totally fine. <laughs> uh, to maybe be, yeah, I'm not fine. And, and that's all right. <laughs> yeah. Or even just like, you know, trying to get to the bottom of like, what kind of exercise or movement do I need actually? Mm. Or what kind can I handle now? Or, mm. you know, I think, or food. I mean, some of those questions are so baffling. Like, what mm. is my body type? What do I need? Mm-hmm. Um, so being able to take a look at that in a more intuitive way from body mm. wisdom perspective versus somebody's program. You know? Yeah. And while you're being supported with this cleansing mm-hmm. product, that's really about, you know, would you, I mean, if you had to sum it up, what is it about? Yeah, so it's like rapid purification of your subtle body, which obviously has results in your physical body. It also amplifies your body's ability to heal itself. So it it releases a big store of energy that can then be turned back towards yourself for healing. Mm. There's a lot of emotional components. I mean, there's like, you know, crown flower helps your body better assimilate sunlight. Um, so there's, you know, things like that. And then there's also like, it will dissolve fear and anxiety and dualism and polarities, you know, this kind of black, white, right, wrong thinking, it kind of loosens that up inside of us. Uh, it helps us be more fluid, flexible, resilient, ready for whatever comes at us. Um, yeah, so there's this, this is a whole kind of range of benefits. Yeah, who knows what's coming at us <laughs> the next day? Lock in, lock down, be free, go out, whichever it might be. <laughs> um, I, I love it. We said earlier, doing something I don't understand. Um, and I, I think for many people, they're very much okay with exploring flower essences, even though they may not understand it, right? And I love that in so many interviews, you you have this phenomenal metaphor about, well, you use your phone and you really don't understand how it works. Um, there is so much about us that we don't understand, right? Like that, yeah. yeah. What is it like 98% of cells that scientists will call junk or DNA? The DNA, like junk yeah. DNA. And I remember as a kid always, listening in science class and they would say we used what was it 25 percent of our brain and I was always like god what would happen if we could use all of it like are we omniscient at that point like would we know everything yeah you know there's just so much untapped potential if we have the methods to be able to access more of ourselves so on that would you what, what, how did you, um, I don't know geez, what the question is, like, like, you know, so getting answers, right, that are not from a book, right, like you talked mm-hmm. about that you found these, you know, that you, you, it wasn't me, that, you know, the, you know, 
is that an exploit? Like, I don't even have words for it. Like we're trying to talk about something that really doesn't have words, but this unknown piece is really where discovery of new things. I think people do have, people have done this, you know, throughout time. I mean, yeah. you know, some people might be very skeptical, which I appreciate because we need more critical thinking these days. Right. Um, so I right. love skepticism, but if you look at inventors, right? Like a lot of inventors just suddenly were like, oh, it's like a flash of insight. Sure, some of them developed a body of work so that they could reach a particular conclusion or they did a million experiments. But I think if we yeah. looked at most inventors, we're gonna find that it wasn't a series of a million experiments. It was suddenly they had this like <gasps> flash and they tried it and it worked. Uh, or even like artists, you know? building you know or sculpting beautiful things like there is a wisdom about us as humans that if we make enough space for the aha moments to arise in contemplation that that's way better than trying to figure it out and slog through with our intellectual mind of you know figuring something out all of us have had this experience experience yeah, we don't need to yeah. be inventors we right. may have like some problem at work and we're just like struggling 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 and then you know, the next morning we're in the shower and we're like, oh, got it, right? Yes. So that moment that it just sort of, so would you say that was so much of your own process for these nine, bringing these nine remedies together? Is definitely. It starts with the intention. How can I benefit yeah. humanity? And when you have that intention, your own wisdom will pop it to the surface, you know, of what it will lead you in the way you need to go. And even you know, plant medicine people, healers, herbalists, that's the way that they figured out what certain plants were good for. I don't believe that it was necessarily, you know, a certain amount of people from in the tribe ate this leaf and they died. And then they knew, I mean, that's one's poisonous. Certainly that's probably an option. You know, we learn from life yeah. or death, Yeah. but also I know from living in Arizona that if there is a scorpion in my house, even though they are the same color as the bamboo flooring, it's that same honey color and they totally camouflage and blend in. My whole aura, subtle body, energy, eyes, everything. Like I could be thinking about, you know, and suddenly I'm like scorpion right there. Yeah. Um, so there is this, there is a wisdom that we have. Uh, and herbalists tapped into that just by asking the plants like, tell me what you're for. Yeah. And sometimes you'll be walking in the forest and you just naturally wouldn't munch on that particular plant. You, you'd get close to it and it's like, ooh, no. Yeah. How do we know? We, don't, we just know, we know. I mean, you almost go to the, so the plants talk to us and that seems absurd in our modern day world. But the reality is, is that probably describes the, the process more so than what we many of us are used to thinking, which is it needs to be found in a book, but how did it end up in the book, right? Like how did, how, how actually did we learn that what Yarrow was for? Um, and probably was not a trial and error research process is what I hear you're saying. And that makes me laugh because, you know, from medicine, we're indoctrinated to believe that is the absolute only way um, and not knocking it at all, but again, you know, these, these wide range of perspectives. And that may be the healing path for you today, but maybe you're also being attracted into uh, an additional source of support in your life that will even amplify maybe yeah. if you're a researcher or maybe if you're on a medicine or maybe you're trying to heal yourself yeah. and utilizing all these different opportunities as um, vehicles of, of support, of transformation, even if you don't understand it. And I... Oh, yeah. I mean, I think we all understand that there's something about genius, like human <laughs> genius, that is kind of miraculous, and we don't quite understand it. And that's okay, because if we reap the benefits of genius, you know, it's faster, it's a faster path, mm. and it's more accurate and more up to date yeah. with the times. And but I think there's some of us that feel more alive, maybe in that pathway than they do in reading a book. You know, like that, you know, and, and 
we end up, you know, this questioning of diagnoses and is it ADHD or is that these people are perhaps wired to take in information and explore information in a completely different way. And, and I don't think, I do not at all think there's one answer to that, but um, I love hearing about your process, which it, you said, how long did you say it was? Two weeks, a week? To come up with the formula? Yeah. A week. A week, yeah. And yeah. they just knew, yeah. Well, and if you, you probably have remember the studies of Cleve Baxter, the CIA guy who was the specialized in the lie detector machine. Oh, just goodness. Speak of that. I love that one. Yes. Yeah. It's like, you know, because if we think like, oh, plants are talking to us, that sounds really out there. They are just moving at a different pace. So even if you watch like the work of Louis Schwartzberg, who, you know, does all the time-lapse photography, plants are moving and dancing. They're just going at such a slow pace that we can't perceive it necessarily. Same with communication, it's happening. Um, so this expert in the polygraph machine, lie detector machine, I mean, he taught the whole CIA how to use this machine. He was so good at it. One night he was in his office. I mean, imagine what kind of guy gets a bug in his butt and it's like, I'm gonna connect my lie detector machine to this philodendron plant in my office and see what happens. <laughs> I'm gonna say, if I have a son and many, you know, like that would be something my, you know, any five-year-old would do, you know, be like, I'm gonna see what happens if I, you know, yes, brilliant. That childlike thing, love it. And so he did that. And then he, he thought to himself, well, I wonder what would happen if I took a match and lit, lit the plant's leaf on fire. And in that moment, he was shocked and his whole perception of the world changed because the polygraph machine connected to his plant went crazy. It registered an enormous amount of stress and he hadn't even taken out the match and lit it on fire. He'd only had the idea. And he was like, oh my God, my, this plant can read my mind. My it's sentient. It can read my thoughts. And he you know, did a series of uh, tons of experiments after that point and realized plants can identify the murder in the room. You know, they could be helpful in homicide cases because you can measure when someone walks in the room, their level of stress. He also found that when you have a relationship with a plant, it will mirror your emotional states regardless of space. So his office mate, went home and it was like a surprise birthday party in New Jersey and it was like hundreds of miles away. The, at the exact moment that he got home and everyone was like, surprise, his plant at his office registered stress. So there's like this sympathetic intertwine and interconnectedness with like, plants that we take care of. For that, I think like it's like an enmeshment or something, you know, there, there's a, there's a, a connection that is is not actually deterred by space <laughs> yeah so i mean how do you explain Distance. that if you think yeah. that if you think that talking to plants is weird while well, talking to plants you know some sort of communication it's happening and mm. we see it in the networks of the mycelium we see trees sharing information with each other on you know how do you deal with this pathogen and so this is this saying. is what you do and you set that intention for what does humanity need and, yes. and the plants respond and there's the science behind how plants actually do respond to that wow what a cool wrap up to the <laughs> ah, to it that's so cool so i it's very i mean lotusway.com is is your your contact how to get in touch but I also, um, I've received the email. So if you want to give a little blast to the Lotus Way Institute, that's, 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 Aww. you know, if you want to learn more about flower essences, mm -hmm. how they can help you, how they might help your family or your clients or whatever it might be, you have a new offering, right? Yes, we have an education program. Finally, uh, we'll have four modules, two of which are up already. And uh, it's for anyone really. I mean, it could be for practitioners for adding a new tool to their kit, but it can also be for people who just wanna be able to heal their families and friends and themselves and yeah. go on a whole new journey of exploration. And yeah, or, and I would even say like, or you wanna get more joy or you wanna be okay with more sadness, like explore how plants and, and, and learn this incredible opportunity available in there is, uh, 
It really is. It's an exploration of flowers and plants, but I love it because it's really, like you said, it's an exploration of you. It's yeah. It's you. It's your which own. really everything is, right? I mean, even a walk out and you know, <laughs> you take a walk outside. This is it's really all about me learning about me. Why did that car almost hit me? <laughs> Perhaps my mind was somewhere else. <laughs> That's wonderful. Well, I. Is there any last words of wisdom? We have about two minutes left. About I don't know what 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 the world needs to hear. I see a lot of people doing two things recently in these days. I see a lot of us struggling, and I think that's a good thing. I see a lot of us uh, like very rapidly moving through internal challenges because it is required for our planet. And that's so beautiful. as a reminder, yeah. you know, if anyone out there is struggling, I probably had my hardest last, you know, three months of my entire life in the last three months. And, you know, that just pushed me to the edge of insanity. And I say that because it's important that we share, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is real, this is happening. Yeah. Uh, and we can use that to awaken to the second part, which is coming yeah. together as community, gathering together, gathering resources mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and helping each other because yeah. the world is in a very precarious place right now. Things are very up in the air and we may need to come together and help each other and pool our you know, strengths yeah. and skills and resources and envision a whole new world. Yeah, and the growing community of those who see this as an opportunity if it speaks to you to join in, you know, and start with a flower essence, join any one of the, you know, you have that flower evolution program that is a monthly exploration of flowers and uh, try it out. If it speaks to you, just, just see, cause I'll tell you as someone who used to be involved in surgery and pills and talk therapy <laughs> as my only sources of reference for healing, um, there is a world of opportunity out there that is exciting and joyful and curious and uh, expansive. And um, I could not thank you enough for putting your work out there because it has been key for me since we came across you. I don't know how long ago, six years ago, maybe. Um, and uh, thank you for all. <laughs> oh my God, at the very least, it makes you more beautiful and radiant. You can pick out the people in the crowd who are taking flower remedies. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. And, and, and if not, you know, sit with a friend, spray that flower essence around you and ask them, do they notice something different? Because everyone does. Yeah. Oh, look at you right now. And, and that's what's available to us, this, yeah. which is so exciting. So Katie, thank you so much for all that you give to the world. Thank you for spending this hour with us. Um, this will be recorded and available and we'll get that out to everyone. And um, if there's any questions, you can reach out to all the available ways on lotusway.com. You can reach mm -hmm. out to me on karenbetton.com. Um, and uh, thank you again. Thank you so much, Karen. Such a pleasure. Thank you for listening to The Truth is Funny. Shift Happens with Karen Benton. Tune in every third Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com for more rich discussions packed with practical tools to help you learn to live limitlessly. Are you looking for more? Visit KarenBetton.com to schedule a private session, join her weekly movement medicine class, and discover some amazing products you didn't know you wanted to try. Ever heard of chocolate meditation? That's KarenBetton.com. See you next time.